Uh, welcome to episode 42 of the franchise. I'm your host, Daniel Ehrenberg. And I'm your co-host, Henry Pauly. And today we're talking about Rocky 4 and 5, the dying twitches of the Rocky <laughs> franchise. <laughs> No, that's not fair. That's not fair. <laughs> that Rocky not fair. Rocky Four is the highest grossing Rocky film, which I didn't that know. Is, yeah. That's yeah. mind blowing. But uh but yeah, Rocky Five, Jesus. Not enough juice left. <laughs> oh man. Uh but let's yeah, start it's... with four, huh? Sure. Alright. <laughs> Rocky Four <laughs> It's ri- written and directed by Sylvester Stallone for the third straight film. I say film. Uh, released <laughs> November twenty seventh, nineteen eighty five. We're not doing summer releases anymore. I don't. Uh, we're back to. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't even know what they're going a for confidence. here. Confidence. Sure. Yeah. No. I mean, normally when you see like a November twenty seventh release, it's either a family film or an Oscar film. Right. And so, I mean, I guess this is kind of a family movie. It's sick and violent, but sure like. Is. I mean, it does have a cute robot. Oh, oh, Lord. Yeah. That's where a lot of that budget went, I think. Henry, that's all I want to talk about. <laughs> there is a robot in this movie, and uh, I can't get past it. It's it's tough. No, uh, I, I mean, I loved it. Yeah. It was the best part of the movie, but, like... Anytime we weren't looking at this robot, all I'm wondering is, uh, what's this robot doing? <laughs> you were wondering, like, where, where yeah, was where's the robot? The robot? Right. And, and the answer, nine times out of ten, I'm sure, is getting fucked by Pauly. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get to it. All right. <laughs> uh, Rocky IV had a budget of $28 million, Pretty high for the Rocky movies. Uh, yeah. But... Doesn't matter. Box office of three hundred million. Jesus. Set the record for the highest grossing sports film of all time, which it held until two thousand nine. Henry, what beat it? The Blind Side. That's correct. You knew that. <laughs> I did. I yeah, looked. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The <laughs> Blind Side, starring your girl Sandy yeah. B. That's true. She is my lady. Mm-hmm. She doesn't know it, but yeah. 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 Uh, Sandra Bullock. That is a long record. It's a long reign. It it was not beaten yeah. by the likes of the Mighty Ducks or <laughs> Yeah Miracle or the Rookie. What a <laughs> Tin Cup. <laughs> <laughs> All those great sports films of the nineties and two thousands. Any yeah. given Sunday got out of its way. <laughs> <laughs> this is a behemoth. Yeah. Big, big time movie. The number two film of uh, 1985, which is a year, or number three film of 1985, I should say. A year we already covered on the podcast because it's number one is Back to the Future. That's right. Uh, and you may recall that number two that year was uh, Rambo First Blood Part Two. Oh. So, I, I mean, 1985 surely must be considered the peak of Stallone <laughs> mania. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd say so. Right? I mean, He's this guy t- can do yeah. anything this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, he's king. He's king. King Cobra, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Sly Stallone, tearing yeah. it up. Yeah, so... uh uh, my other favorite fun fact about Rocky IV, Henry. Yeah. Um, there's a novelization of Rocky IV. Do you know about this? I uh, I purposely, I read like a little teeny thing, and then I purposely did not continue because I wanted to hear it from you. Uh, the novelization, I mean, and this was a popular thing in the, in the right. 80s and 90s. You'd get novelizations of big movies. And right. uh, I had a couple that I read. I, I I once owned the novelization of Ace Ventura 2, When Nature Calls. <laughs> <laughs> All right? I also read the novelization of Val Kilmer's The Saint. 
All right. Really? Yeah. Really? Uh huh. That was a book. That's a book I read. <laughs> oh, it's fantastic. Tried to rewatch that movie on TV a couple months ago. Yeah, how'd that Holy go? Holy shit. <laughs> Hey, by the way, last night I saw um, Terrence Malick's new film, Song to Song. Oh. And uh, Val Kilmer Dude. pops up in that bad boy. <laughs> Who doesn't pop up in a Terrence Malick film? <laughs> I know. Days? I know, but he's in there as like a rock star, and he's got a soul patch and long hair. It's real What's weird. What's it called? Song to Song. Jesus. You don't know about this one? No. Takes place. Uh, it's like a love triangle in the Austin music scene, oh, and boy. Uh, you know it's it's not good. Yeah. But it, it is better than Night of Cups by a lot. <laughs> I'll say that. Yeah, you're not a fan. It, but it had like legit good moments for the first time in a while from a Terrence oh, Malick right. movie. It's yeah. Been, it has been a while. Yeah, but I mean, it's it is amazing the casts he gets for these movies. Like, th- I mean, this movie, you know who the the first five build actors are in Song to Song? This no. is crazy. Who? All right, Michael Fassbender, Ryan Gosling, Rooney Mara, Natalie Portman, and Kate Blanchett. Wow! <laughs> Fucking insane. That's crazy. Man. Yeah, people just want to work with that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. It's true. Much like another great auteur, Sylvester Stallone, <laughs> to bring us back. Full circle. Full circle. Um, go the distance. Here, here's something I thought about, because Flea popped up in, um, in fucking Song to Song. Flea okay. from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Here's a great trivia question that no one will ever get, and the answer is Flea. If you ever want to, like, fool someone, okay? Uh-huh. What actor <laughs> has been in films by Terrence Malick, <laughs> uh, Francis Ford Coppola, Robert Zemeckis, Gus Van Sant, <laughs> and uh, the Coen brothers? Wow. Answer, Flea. <laughs> wow. How about that? That's quite a resume. How, yeah, amazing. Jesus. Yeah. Flea. Flea. Uh-huh. And and then if if people can't get it, you could say, okay, this actor also appeared nude on stage at Woodstock 1999. <laughs> so check it out. It's Flea. That was one of the first stories you ever told on this show. About Woodstock 99? Yeah. Oh, I remember why The Haunting came up, right? That's right. Because I went to see that during Woodstock 99. That's right. My binge. All right, um, how about the plot? Oh, wait. The, the, I didn't finish talking about the novelization of Rocky IV. Yeah, go ahead. The novelization of Rocky IV is written by one Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So he says. Listen, he's credited on the book. Now, I found this book on Amazon.com. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, only available through private sellers. Um, okay. But I did find it for $10. And you bought it. Listen, I wanted to buy it, but it said up to four weeks delivery. Uh-oh. Now, if I was still a drunk, <laughs> I would have bought this book. But now that I'm sober, I was able to go through it in my mind and right. realize that the lifespan of my interest in this book is <laughs> 24 hours tops. <laughs> so in four weeks when this comes, I will right. not care anymore. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. The wait. You, you couldn't. Uh, there's no easy way out. No easy way out. So uh, if any Rocky Foreheads out there have this book and want to tell me about it, that I will be down for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the premise of Rocky IV, um, <laughs> I mean... We have a recap. Uh, yeah, of course. Previously on Rocky. But I, I mean, <laughs> just the storyline, if I may. Yes. There's a, a new boxer in town. And uh, 
he's another super villain, like in the last movie. Right. <laughs> but even bigger and badder. Uh, and his name is um, Ivan Drago. Yeah. Played by the great Dolph Lundgren. And you see Apollo Creed swimming, splashing around in a pool, as he's wont to do. And he's watching the TV. He sees this Drago fella. And he looks concerned. And he is Rocky's trainer at this point. So I'm thinking, oh, God. Apollo, he thinks that Rocky's going to get – he's he's big for his britches. He just beat Clubber Lang. He's right. going to want to fight this Drago. And Drago is superhuman. He has punches that can murder. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's been tested by a Russian technology. Right, right. Yeah. So – now, but that is not what Apollo is thinking. Apollo is thinking he wants to come out of retirement and fight Ivan Drago himself. Uh, he does this. Um, and uh, Ivan Drago promptly kills him. <laughs> <laughs> this is the premise of this movie. It's true. And, I mean, last... Rocky 3, we were talking about how Rocky's out of character. Rocky 4, Apollo Creed's out of character. <laughs> he is far too bright for this. Oh, that's interesting. And uh, then... So Rocky decides he's going to train in the uh, Russian <laughs> snowscape. And fight <laughs> Ivan Drago, which he does at the end. And in doing and in fighting Ivan Drago, he um, ends the Cold War. <laughs> All right, that is beautiful. That's the yeah. plot of this movie. Yeah. Now let's go through it moment by moment. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, Henry. Uh, so. It opens with a great credit <laughs> sequence in which we see one boxing glove with the flag of the Soviet Union and one blo boxing glove with the flag of the United States of America. Now, these uh, gloves, independently of arms, <laughs> come together and punch each other, uh, <laughs> causing the screen to explode in a fireball. And that pretty much lets you know what you're in for with this movie. Uh, it kind of reminded me of the uh, Dirty Harry uh, cold open. Yeah, they're, they're, they're definitely... Oh, no, that's way more stylish than this. <laughs> <laughs> the Magnum Force one. Yeah. Speaking of Magnum Force, Hal Holbrook was on Grey's Anatomy this week. <laughs> And he was playing a character married to June Squibb. And I'm I'm thinking I thought Grey's Anatomy was supposed to be like the sexiest show on TV. <laughs> when did we start casting Hal Holbrook and June Squibb? I love it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Anyway. Yeah. That's not having a good season, Grey's Anatomy. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. No, that's that's been Grey's Anatomy update. All right. Uh, Pauly gets a robot. Let's talk about it. <laughs> it's Pauly's birthday at the beginning of this movie. Yeah. And, and, and uh, he's living with, uh, with the Rockies at this point. Right. <laughs> with the Rockies. And uh, it's, it's at this point I figured out what purpose Pauly serves in the Rocky franchise. Something I've been struggling with for three films. I know now. you have, yeah. It's true. He is Rocky's Cato Kalin. <laughs> just lives in the house. He's just around. Yeah. <laughs> Pauly is there, so if Rocky commits murder, there's a witness. <laughs> Uh, you know, uh, live in the house. Uh, get you a robot, Paulie. Yeah. Hey, uh, drive you over to McDonald's in my white Bronco. Am I right? <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> I don't have the voice quite right tonight. I'm a little like uh, Sylvester okay. Stallone in Rocky Three. <laughs> um, 
So, yeah, so it is a nighttime a- nighttime podcast, a, a rare one. The the franchise after dark, as I like to call it. Yeah, sure. And sure. Uh, yeah, how about that? Robot Polly. Oh wait, so now Polly is waiting for his birthday present, and he's got two great ones. One is a birthday cake with a picture of Burt Young on it. <laughs> Which I want for my next birthday. <laughs> Henry. You want to we get you that for your and birthday? Uh, our birthdays famously close together. True, true. In in days, certainly not in years, as you are much, much older than me. <laughs> uh, than I. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I think we should have a joint birthday party this year. And okay. wa- a franchise listener should get us a uh, franchise happy birthday cake. <laughs> With Burt Young's face on it. What do you think? I'm totally down for that. I, I think that's got to happen. I think it's going to happen. Who's our biggest fan out there? Mikey Ooh. Graff? You do it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You well, heard it here. You heard it here first. Uh, yep. All right. But he has another far more important present. Yeah. And it is a robot. All right. And it comes in. I mean, the score pipes in. Uh, first of all, Bill Conti not involved Ugh. in Rocky IV. The no. score in this scene, it sounds like the theme song of Doogie Howser, M.D. <laughs> and uh, the the robot just comes in like, Hello, Polly. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> it rolls in. Is it like holding a cake? Is, is I it, think so. Yeah, yeah, it like presents the cake to him. And... Uh, and later we see him serve the Polly, um, you know, uh, whiskey and shit, beers. And uh, at this point in the movie, the robot has a male voice. But later in the film, Polly reprograms this robot. And um, I got to tell you, Hank. Yeah. The robot in Rocky IV, transgender. <laughs> Didn't occur to me. Yep, transgender robot, and uh, oh, all, right. all right, because it does become a lady. Yeah, and true. it's a sexy lady, and it's like Polly, you're the best. It's true. And I mean, what else is he programming this robot to do? That's my question. <laughs> transgender robot. I. Yeah. I don't know that uh, he's not carving holes into this thing. It's uh, it's pretty awkward. Yeah, he's like putting... Uh, it, there's got to be like a fleshlight somewhere in that robot. <laughs> you know how they have fleshlight? You know the fleshlight, Henry? <laughs> I, I, I believe I know what you're speaking of, yes. Do you know that they have fleshlights where it's supposed to mimic the, the exact... Inside of specific <laughs> porn stars' vaginas. Uh, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Right so now? if you have like a favorite porn star, say you're a big fan of uh, Riley Reed, okay. um, and you're like, oh god, I'm gonna kill myself if I never get to bang Riley Reed. Of course, you're never gonna get to bang Riley Reed. She's a famous porn star. Right. So you can buy this flashlight. Whose insides feel identical to Riley Reed's <laughs> vagina, and you can fuck that. Okay. Yeah. So in Paulie's case, uh, who do you think he has? Uh, I mean, what? It's 1985. I'm gonna say Marilyn Chambers. <laughs> so he's got uh, Marilyn Chambers. Yeah. Robot. Robot. Yeah. All right. Uh, And he's probably lubricating it with that cake of his. I just can't even. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, All right. (laughs) Now, here. (laughs) Where do you go from there? Um, I will say. I don't think anywhere. I will say. Here's another great thing about Rocky Four. Uh, other than the robot, 
I <clears throat> love last week I presupposed a Rocky film in which every scene would end on a freeze frame. Yeah. Rocky Four is that yeah. film. You got it. Yep. I nailed it. <laughs> I nailed it like Paulie nailed this. that robot. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I mean, every scene. There's a scene where Rocky and Adrian kiss, and it's not a big moment. They're married at this point with a fucking kid. Right. But uh, right. freeze frame. Boom. Freeze frame. Every, there's so many freeze frames, I stopped writing them all down. That's kind of how I became with the uh, montages. There's a lot of montages. And I got to tell you, Rocky 4 IV and 5, man, are there a lot of songs. A lot of music. Yeah. So much. Yeah. Well, I don't want to like give a spoiler, but um, my MVP for Rocky 4 is the uh, official soundtrack. Well, but who specifically? Every single artist on there. <laughs> it's a great soundtrack. Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean you could freely make James Brown your MVP because he is in Rocky IV. Right. Yep. Oh, yes, he is. Living big, in America. Yeah. Highlight. Big uh, highlight. Big highlight. But, of course, um, I mean, look, there are three great musical highlights of Rocky IV. Let's talk about All them right. each individually. Right. One, one is James Brown, and that's a bonkers scene. That That's crazy. It sure Be, is. Because yeah. Apollo Creed is about to fight Ivan Drago, played by Dolph Lundgren. Oh, we got to get to, like, the cast at some point. Um, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And uh, we see Ivan Drago. He appears to be in an underground bunker. And then all of a sudden, <laughs> he raises to the sky, and he's in the ring. Like, the ring was underground. I, and that can't be a regulation WBA ring, I gotta tell you. I wouldn't think so. No. Yeah, I So then so. Apollo gets introduced to the tunes of James Brown's Living in America, and James Brown is there in the arena, and James Brown, the hardest working man in show business, Another performer yeah. who uh, we I got it. You know it's interesting. We talked about Flea before. The Red Hot Chili Peppers famously closed Woodstock '99 in a blaze of glory. Uh, uh -huh. James Brown opened Woodstock '99. <laughs> really? Yes. Fun fact. I didn't know that. I have all the Woodstock '99 facts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so he's performing "Living in America." Apollo's dancing around. There, every so often, we see like Apollo and James Brown just nodding at each other, <laughs> like <silent. Yeah. laughs> like hey brother, hey, and uh, yep, you know, Old friends. James Brown can't feel great though because Apollo dies a couple minutes later. We'll get yep. to it. Yep. Um, uh, the next great musical sequence is uh, after, um. Apollo dies. Rocky, very upset, gets in his car and goes for a drive. Oh, boy, does he. Do you know what song this is? Is that uh, No Easy Way Out? Yes. Yeah. Well, who is that by? Oh, uh, is it Survivor? Oh, I think it might be. Survivor. Back. That could be an episode of Surviving Survivor. Yeah. Um, he, now, Rocky has vanity license plates. <laughs> They read Southpaw, but without the U. So right, because he can't spell. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, I, give me Southpaw, you know. S-O-T-H-P-A-W. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read good, no I'm I saying? Don't, I don't read so good, so, you know, so, Southpaw. Hey, what was the word I liked the misspelling of in Rocky Two? I mean, the mispronunciation? Oh, uh, right, when he's reading the cue cards. Yeah, what the hell was that? Feet filing mainly. Oh, yeah, wait, what is it? What, <laughs> what is Oh, yeah, no, oh, wait. Feel mainly. No, 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 smeal. Oh, there you go, yeah. It, it makes smeal me smeal mainly. mainly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, 
so this song is going. Rocky's driving. We're getting a montage of great moments between Rocky and Apollo. We get to see their lovely frolic in the water from the last movie again. <laughs> and um, and th- and in this scene, Rocky drives his car to Russia. You didn't know you could do it, but no. you can. He gets in that car, starts driving all the way from Philadelphia to Russia. It's a long way. Paulie's with him, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just hanging on. Yeah. <laughs> and I the, like your Kato Kalin uh, comparison. That's, that's who really he is. good. That's a really good parallel. And of course, yeah. the third and best musical moment in the film is Hearts on Fire, a great song. Hearts on fire. <laughs> now, is that that's when he's uh, running around in uh, Wyoming? I mean, Russia, right? Yep. This, yeah, good one. All right. Th- <laughs> this is a great training montage, and I'm gonna go ahead and say it's the best training montage. Yeah, it is. It's I the agree. best. I, I I I actually rank them. Oh yeah. Uh, I did uh, still put the first Rocky as the best one, but four was a very close second. Okay. Now, yeah. part of what I like is we're cutting back to Ivan Drago, his training. Right. And he's just he's punching that Russian technology to show that he can murder people. Right. And, um, and we see him doing steroids. <laughs> Which I mean, pretty could, rich. It could not be more hypocritical because then we're cutting back to Rocky, like really putting in the work. Yeah, and Sylvester right. Stallone has never been more roided out than in Rocky <laughs> Four. But he's great. He's like pulling Polly on a sleigh at one point, <laughs> and of course, the best moment of the film in which Rocky climbs a mountain by sheer force of will. With no equipment. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. It's true. He, like, walked... It's like if someone just walked up Mount Everest. Uh, you think he was, like, uh, trying to do, like, a cliffhanger? Oh, that's true. Another great Stallone movie. <laughs> no. I don't need no stinking pickaxe. <laughs> yeah. I just walk up the mountain, Paulie. You know, yeah. you wait at the bottom. I'll be, I'll be back when I get back. I'm like Spider Man. I don't, I don't walk so good, but uh, you know, if I get beat up tonight, <laughs> <laughs> right? I'll get up there. I got the eye <laughs> of the tiger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh man. Um. Let's, uh, I mean, there's so much to talk about in this movie. Can we, can, well, we, can we talk about Dolph Lundgren? Sure. Now, this is a man who, you know, this movie launched a career. It did. It really did. He flat out had a career after this movie. It's true. Yeah. He was the star of a lot of action films. I haven't seen a lot of them. Have you? No, I, um... I think I saw Universal Soldier. I saw that, too. A franchise, by the way, that we can cover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then he kind of just went underground, right? No, I mean, he very... didn't. He was constantly working. He's one right, of these right, guys right, where you look right. at his IMDb, and it, he's been in, like, 90 action movies you've never heard of that were, like, blockbuster exclusives or something. <laughs> right. Uh, I did he... see him. He's in the Expendables movies. Yes, I yeah. saw the third one. And uh, he had, like, a role on Chuck for a second. Did he really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, uh, you know, he pops up, this Dolph. <laughs> he uh, also has a master's degree in chemical engineering. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm, I swear to God. You didn't know this? No. It's my favorite thing about him. Jesus. He, here, I'm looking at it right now, okay? It's like the, um... He has a degree in chemistry from Washington State University, a degree in chemical engineering from the Royal Institute of Technology, and a master's degree in chemical engineering from the University of Sydney. 
That's amazing. It's like how the the main guy in the Offspring has like a master's in something <laughs> scientific. I don't remember what. I think like neuroscience or something. <coughs> yeah. So he's no dummy. No, he's pretty fly for a white guy. Probably. Uh, I. <laughs> nice. I he, he's he's probably the most well educated per- person of this cast. Ooh, that has to be true. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, Carl Weathers. Uh, no, no, Talia you're probably Shire, right. Maybe. No, Talia Shire. She never had a work a day in her life. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's got to be Dolph. Yeah, smartest man on the set. Sure, that's insane. <laughs> that's it, it crazy is. that that's true. Yeah. <laughs> and he has uh, four lines of dialogue. Yeah, I know. But he does look great. He's oh, a he's a great figure. Villain. He really holds the screen. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I love like, him. Before you, you know, we're going to... Sh- I, didn't, I didn't really want to shit on Dolph because... I'm not shitting on Dolph for a second. Yeah, right, right. Because he... He's excellent. I mean, you know who right. else is excellent? Who's that? The robot? Well... <laughs> Yes. Don't get me started on the robot again. I could mm. talk about the robot for the rest of this podcast. Right. Now, um, I was talking to some fellows from a Rocky podcast. Oh. And, uh, you know, they have like 37 episodes and all they talk about is Rocky movies. Wow. Uh, now, I'm putting this out there because they're listeners now. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you do an episode that's just about Paulie's robot, <laughs> I will come on as a guest. <laughs> Invitation accepted. Yeah, I hope so. I would. Yeah. Lo- I'd love to appear on that podcast because that's yeah. my favorite part of any Rocky movie. Right. Um. Now, no, we got to talk about Brigitte Nielsen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Brigitte Nielsen plays Dolph's wife in this film, mm-hmm. and uh, she's a giant woman, <laughs> and she's great. I love her in this movie. Yeah. But she's also a noted crazy person. Famously, Sylvester Stallone fell in love with her, briefly married her. That's right. And uh, and then they split up. Um, and rumor has it, <laughs> Henry. Yeah. She may have been cheating on Sylvester Stallone with Tony Scott. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no. Oh my god, I don't think I knew that. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Oh boy. <laughs> Tony Scott. I bet he didn't like that. <laughs> the late Tony Scott. The late Tony. This is a lot. We're going to be doing that a lot in the next uh yeah. Those must have been some days of thunder. <laughs> Just <laughs> That sounds like it was a true romance. That sounds like she did it for revenge. Oh, baby. Oh, man. Well, they did uh, uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2. Yeah, together. that's right. That's where they met. So there, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they oh, were boy. sleeping with each other. And supp- I think Tony Scott was cheating on his his wife with Brigitte Jesus. Nielsen. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my. Let's not remember him too fondly, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, noted crazy person. It's true, right? Wasn't she, like, married to Flavor Flav? Uh, if not married, certainly long-term dating. Mm. Yeah. I think they met on one of those shows, like, The Surreal Life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right, I remember that. Sure. Flavor Flav. <laughs> <laughs> no easy way out of that one. Yeah. Who's smarter, Flavor Flav or Brigitte <laughs> Nielsen? Flavor Flav was at least in fucking Public Enemy. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to give the edge to him. Sure. What yeah. What movie were we watching for the franchise recently where uh, there was a lot of Public Enemy? Oh, um... I can't Ooh, remember. I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, anyway... Uh, so, 
I'm very interested in the World Boxing Association's real life rules for what happens when a boxer kills someone in the ring. Yeah. Is uh is Ivan Drago held liable or is this an accident? Do we let him fight more boxers? Does he does Apollo lose the heavyweight championship for dying? I I mean, he's not the heavyweight champion at that point, but like no. It, it, it's it's very interesting. Has it ever happened? Uh, somebody dying in the ring? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yes, for sure. In like I a major that. bout? Oh, I don't know about that, but I mean, definitely people have died in the ring. Because I sure. think they got to do something about this, because it's becoming an epidemic. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen Mickey <laughs> die... <laughs> <laughs> as a result of a boxing match. That is a great point. And now Carl Weathers. I mean, uh, Apollo Creed. Yeah. So uh, what's going on here? I don't know, but Rocky... Boxing just... is a dangerous sport. Yeah, yeah. Rocky, he, he brings uh, chaos and mayhem with him everywhere. That's true. Put on that headgear, buddy. Yeah. I'm yeah. not into it. It's like uh, a real... You know what, really? If they really want to make a realistic like, version of Rocky Balboa, like picking up the character years later, yeah, it'd be like uh, Chris Benoit, the wrestler. What, <laughs> what would end up happening is Rocky, as a result of all the hits to the head he's taken, yeah. now would have the brain power of an infant. <laughs> and... Uh, and he would just like lose it one day and murder fucking Adrian and Rocky Jr. and then commit suicide. And then the the the, the proper end of the Rocky <laughs> series should just be Paulie as the lone survivor, not knowing what to do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> living in the house by himself. No, living in the house with the robot. Oh right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. That should be the end of the movie, like this dark ending <laughs> where Rocky kills his whole family and commits suicide, and then we get this shot of like Paulie living happily ever after at the Balboa estate with the robot. Yeah, yeah. What do you think? Well, I, I like it. I mean, you know, also by the end of this one, I mean, Paulie probably should be living by himself, having squandered. Well, that's five. We're not yeah. there yet. Yeah. Um, all right, so the movie ends with uh, Rocky beats Drago, and they, and then Rocky asks for a microphone. You know, yeah, right? Because that yeah. happens a lot. <laughs> it's just like in wrestling when uh, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> Stone Cold Steve Austin wins, and he's like, "Give me a beer." Austin yeah. three sixteen says, "I just whooped your ass." Uh, but um, Rocky he gets the I microphone. Could change, and you could change. Everybody could change. change. <laughs> and we see like the president of Russia and like a bunch of Russian politicians sitting in a skybox. Yeah. And they all do a slow clap and give Rocky a standing ovation. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. The Gorbachev uh, lookalike. Yeah, big time. Oh, uh, man. And that's Rocky Four. You have anything else to talk about? I love it. I mean, I, I had to say, I think besides the first movie, this was my favorite Rocky. I didn't remember that much about it. Oh, see, I've seen... This was the Rocky that I kind of grew up with. Like, okay. this was, you know, like, this was, like, in a weird way, like, this was my Rocky. You know what I mean? Like, I I, I remember it being on TV constantly. And It uh, was, it was, but I, like, would catch yeah. parts of it. Like, I remember Drago killing Creed. I remembered the training montage pretty okay. Yeah. But um, not a lot beyond that. I didn't remember the robot. Yeah. Also, you know, it should be mentioned, we were talking about how, you know, <laughs> Rocky kind of leaves a trail of death. I mean, he is ready to throw in the towel for Apollo, but literally waits a little bit too long. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... He let his he friend die. He let his friend die. If he would have just thrown that towel in, 
Think of all the pain and anguish. Yeah, who's he going to bro out with now? Paulie's drunk all the time. At right. the beginning of this movie, it seems like Rocky and Apollo are each other's only friends. Right. And uh, there's a scene at the beginning of this movie, Hank. Do you remember this? Where they're just hanging out in Rocky's <coughs> mansion watching mm-hmm. footage of their own fights. Yes. Yeah. That's what they do for fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of amazing to me. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know they had. It'd be uh, like if you and me, like when we hung out, like for fun, yeah. just sat around listening to our own podcast. That's all we did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Remember that was a sweet joke you made about the Matrix Reloaded. <laughs> so, look, just forty-one episodes. Yeah, it's like um, Aziz Ansari has a story he tells about going over to Kanye West's house, and Kanye sitting in there listening to his own album and like <laughs> bopping his head. And Aziz Ansari was totally like blown away, and he was like, "What's going on?" And Kanye just looked at him and goes, "These beats are dope." <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I love Kanye West, I love That's that man. Great. Oh yeah. my god. Um, what do you give this movie? <clears throat> I'm giving it four stars. I am too. Are you really? Yep. I yeah. loved it. Yeah. I it's so loved fun. It. it is. Hey, and this is the one. We were saying, like, if you want silliness out of your Rocky movie, put on Rocky right. Three, it's got Mr. T and Hulk Hogan. Uh uh-uh. uh. Four's better. Yep. I agree. Yep. It could, I mean, really, we'll get there, but, you know, the, it, they could have made this the sequel. Like, this could have been Rocky 2. No, it couldn't have. Are you insane? Yeah. <laughs> because it's it's silly. I mean, it's a, it's it's another one of these movies where Rocky's a superhero and and he's fighting a supervillain. And this guy's legit a supervillain. Like, he has super strength. And <laughs> he's, like, got right. powers. It's ridiculous. Like, he no does. one punches as hard as this guy. <laughs> It's ridiculous. He's but, uh, chemically enhanced. Oh yeah, well, so is Rocky. But uh, right, that's uh, how about those twitches dying at the end there when Apollo dies? Pretty graphic. Yeah, I don't like that Apollo dies, but I, I guess it's fine. I don't like it either, but yeah. yeah, not enough Apollo in this one. Yeah, although you get a lot at the beginning, but it's like a different kind of Apollo. He's all weird and pissed off. I don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, four. Who's your MVP? Uh, I, the uh, the soundtrack. Oh right, the soundtrack. You said that the OST. Uh, my soundtrack. I mean, my MVP, of course, is the robot. Golf. Right, right, right. The robot. Uh, the robot. Yeah. The uh, LVP for me in this was Polly. Finally, Polly. Yeah. He's really tough to take in this flick. He is. But I he's mean, the one who brings us the robot, <coughs> so I cannot bring myself to make him the LVP. Oh, okay. Who would you go with? I gotta tell you, I'm gonna go with Apollo. This is not the Apollo I know and love. Uh, uh-huh. Carl Weathers tries his best, but um, yeah, the character, not the performance. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's it. That's Rocky Four. Shall oh, we man. move on? Sure. Rocky Five. Now we've been running on a three-year schedule here. Rocky yep. Five comes out five years after Rocky Four, November sixteenth, nineteen ninety. Yeah. And this is one of those franchises that probably shouldn't have seen the other side in nineteen eighty-nine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's. It's. Di- oh. Directed by returning auteur John G. Avildsen. Yeah. Best director winner for Rocky One. Yeah. And written once again by Sylvester Stallone. Uh, a budget of $42 million. <laughs> that is too much. Wow. <laughs> That's far too high. Wow. Um, and, uh, I mean, this thing was supposed to be a hit, but box office, one nine. Team. Boy. In its opening weekend, it came in second place to previously covered franchise picture Home Alone. Mm. And it never recovered. Home Alone was the sleeper hit, 
people no longer interested in Rocky. Yeah. Very sad. Nobody cares. Uh, yeah. 1990, it came in number 32 in the box office. It did slightly worse than Joe versus the Volcano. <laughs> and, and that movie did not do well. Yeah, I, I love that movie. I do too, underrated. John Patrick yeah. Shanley. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know. And I got to tell you, it did slightly better than another underrated movie, one that we will soon cover on the franchise, I hope. Mm. Gremlins 2, The New Batch. Oh, wow. That's been a long time. Sure. Isn't that Richard Donner? I think so. All right, then we won't cover it for a while. I'm fucking sick of Richard Donner. <laughs> We've given him a lot of coverage. Yeah. <laughs> You gotta take a step back from the Donner films. Yep. Yeah. So, uh... So there's two dead people in this movie. Wait, you didn't do your fucking superhero count for Rocky Oh, I'm Four. sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I... Because I don't have one for five, so I'll do this, yeah, real quick. Um, I got three. Okay, well, let's start right off the bat. Well, I mean, is that including Stallone, Judge Dredd? No. Okay, so, so I don't three other yours. ones. Okay, we've yeah. got Dolph Lundgren, who was in the 1989 adaptation of The Punisher. That's correct. Uh, which is a pretty bad movie. I don't think I've ever seen it. It's kind of watchable. Like, I actually like it more than, like, the Tom Jane Punisher. Oh, yeah. But it's pretty bad. Um, and uh, he was also He-Man. Are we counting that? Well, that's what I wrote down. I didn't know whether to count it. I mean, do, yeah. do we count, you know, is I, that I a think, superhero? I, I think it is. He's the star of uh, Masters of the Universe. I say the star, but, um, <laughs> you know, there was a lot of teen making out in that movie for no reason. A young I don't Cor remember that A movie young Courtney all. Cox in Masters of the Universe. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that's what I remember. And Frank Langella as Skeletor. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well... Yeah, I got two others. Okay, who do you got? <clears throat> Dolph's trainer. Okay. Who does a lot of shouting in Russian. Is an actor named Michael Pataki. And he was in not only the live action Batman, Green Hornet, and the Adventures of the Amazing Spider-Man. Well. He also played uh, the Sewer King in the Batman animated series. <laughs> the Sewer King. That's great. <laughs> I love, hey, I, I love, one. I love characters like that in movies and TV yeah. shows and comic books, where it's like, "I'm the king of the sewer. I live amongst all the rats, and they do my bidding." Ah. <laughs> I love those characters. And uh, Brigitte Nielsen. Oh, was in, well, she was in Marvel's creation, uh, Red Sonia. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I guess that is a superhero, Red Sonia. Sure. Red Sonia, a character no longer owned by Marvel, I believe. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yeah. I think Dynamite Entertainment runs those Red <laughs> Sonia comics now. All right. Yep. So that's three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, back to Rocky Five. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Uh, Hey, Hank. Yeah. I'm going to run to the bathroom. Uh, oh, boy. While I'm there, though, do the plot of Rocky Five. All right. All right. So, Polly has squandered Rocky's fortune by literally signing a power of attorney. And Rocky is forced to have an estate sale and auctions off everything in his house and so he literally has to move back into his old Philadelphia neighborhood uh, with Polly in tow and uh, and his his son has to adjust to not being rich and, uh, and a young up-and-comer Tommy Gunn uh, wants to train with Rocky with uh, whom Rocky then basically replaces his own son with and uh, decides to train with Tommy Gunn. And then eventually they take the fight to the streets. Um, Taking it to the streets. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right, you did a great job. I heard most of that. Okay. All right. Uh, the movie. Uh, I mean, this is an exhausting movie. It really is. I agree. I have no interest in talking about it. Like, I was so excited to talk about Rocky Four, and and like, yeah. like before recording this podcast, I was like, oh fuck yeah! Like we're a day late. Sorry about that, listeners. Um, but like. Like I was mad that we had to do it a day late because I was like psyched to talk about Rocky Four, and it didn't occur to me in my excitement. Holy shit! After that's done, I gotta talk <laughs> about Rocky Five, and it, it it's yeah. boring. I know my friend Eric, who's a listener, loves this movie, and I went into it because of that with a very open mind. And it's just it's he, not, he loves it. He loves it. It's, I think it's his favorite Rocky movie. Um, and I just. Oh my god! I I just found it boring. Like, not even that bad. Like, it'd be nice if it was like hilariously bad or something. But it's just yeah, barely yeah, yeah. A movie. It's it sucks. Um, I agree. It opens pretty stylishly. I, mean, I gotta say, with an Avildsen, you know, previously on Rocky segment, and uh, right, and then we cut to Sylvester Stallone's ass. <laughs> How'd you feel yeah. about that? Oh God! Yeah. I mean, every moment of this movie was absolutely painful. Was it? Yeah, I, I guess it was. Uh, R.I.P. Uh, Sage Stallone and uh, Tommy Morrison. They're both dead. Yep. Wait. Sage Stallone? Like Sylvester Stallone's son? Yeah, he's dead, man. How'd he die? Uh, I believe the official cause was like some kind of heart attack, but they found drugs. Of course they did. I mean, talk about never having to work a day in your life. You're Sage Stallone. <laughs> you could have done anything. I, I mean, if what he wanted to do was drugs, more power to him. Fine. <laughs> So, more body counts. Uh, Sage Stallone is insufferable in this movie. I agree. I mean, he's playing himself, basically. Sylvester Stallone's son. And right. he just sucks. And that stupid <laughs> earring he has hanging from his ear, I want to rip it out of him. Hey, uh, you could be in my movie, uh... I'm gonna make it on the on the cheap, but uh, I can get my son in there. You know, uh, hey. they did not make this on the cheap. So no, they did not. <laughs> All right, so that's Sage, uh, and so this Tommy machine gun fella is dead too. Mm-hmm. All right. He died of HIV. HIV. Yeah. When? Uh, a few years ago. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I don't mean to laugh. I mean, it's terrible, but yeah. 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 Isn't that something? That is something. I don't even know what to say about that. I know. It's horrible. It's really bad. Yeah. Well, I'll say right now, uh, those two unfortunate dead fellas tie for my LVP. <laughs> That's how we'll celebrate their memories today. I'm uh, I'm gonna be giving that to Stallone. Mm, I'm I'm not at all. I don't I'm, even I'm know blaming why this you whole wouldn't. thing on him because I'm I'm blaming the whole situation on him. Why he's not even directing? I don't even care. He, the fact that he even put his name on this man. I mean, Jesus. He at least feels like Rocky. I understand the intention of this movie. It feels Do you? yeah, of course. It it feels like when we were talking about. Rocky a while back I said it's a weird series to cover because one two six and seven are trying to be real movies and then the middle chapters aren't they're just right. trying to be silly fun movies and right. what I found rewatching Rocky 5 Henry is that's not true Rocky 5 is trying yeah. to be a real movie and I think that's, that's where true. it goes astray because it's just a bad movie. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like, if it was... It's not fun, because it's it's a deadly serious movie. It has something to say about 
uh, athletes in their old age and their money woes and their physical woes. And what do you do next? Yeah. Uh, it, it, but it's just kind of boring to watch. Yeah. You know, we brought up that it's 30 for 30 really broke. <laughs> you know, watch yeah. that instead. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, if you want to watch an athlete go through financial problems. Yeah, and there's a great documentary. <laughs> watch Rocky about Five. It. Yeah, or watch the. You know what? Yeah. You know what Rocky Five fucking is? It's a shitty what? version of Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what it point. is, man. The Wrestler is a great movie. Yeah. Masterpiece. I would say so. Yeah. All right. Uh, I mean, what can we even say? He is brain damage. He is. He's brain damaged in this movie. He can't fight anymore, so he trains Tommy Gunn. And yeah. I mean, he's ignoring his kid. Uh, Paulie, did you talk about how Paulie's the one to lose all the money? Yeah, I just briefly said it. Okay, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Um. yeah. Why he would entrust anything to him? Yeah. Is kind of amazing. It's really like, crazy. Would Adrian, like, have let that happen? I should hope not. Yeah. But uh, but she does. Uh, I mean, don't let's not blame Adrian. Let's blame everything on Paul. <laughs> but, I, I, I mean, so this launches Rocky into this new life. What's he going to do? At first, his idea is like, hey, I, I'll be a dad. I've been ignoring my kid all these fucking years, getting yeah. beat up. I mean, my favorite years of ignoring the kid were when, he, uh, even though this movie takes place later the same day of Rocky IV, my kid ages six years. All right? So I enjoyed missing those six years fighting Ivan Drago. Right. But uh, now I'm going to be a father. But, of course, he meets this Tommy Gunn fellow who, like, idolizes Rocky and, and so strokes his ego a little bit. And Rocky's all yeah. of a sudden, now I'll be a trainer and a manager. And uh, he starts walking around wearing a sweater with a picture of himself snitted into it. <laughs> Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. And starts uh. teaching Tommy Gunn lessons that Mickey taught him. And he just becomes insufferable again. He's just yapping, yapping, yapping. <laughs> the, the worst being <laughs> when he starts talking about, like, hey, who's your best friend? Wrong. Your your best friend is Frankie Fear. You gotta be afraid <laughs> to be a successful boxer in this business. Hey, yo, what? Hey, hey, Adrian. Yo, Adrian. You remember that time I took off your glasses and raped you? Yeah, it was the most romantic moment of my life. Hey, for me too. <laughs> I popped that hymen like I popped Creed in the jaw. Jesus. Oh, my Lord. Oh. Yeah, she was probably a virgin, right? Yeah. Oh, 100%. She's never, she says she's never been in a room alone with a man. Right. <laughs> Good time. Hey, yo. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Oh, man. Um, how about this? Are you going to make your LVP the soundtrack of this movie? <laughs> because MC Hammer has a song in it. Does he? Yeah. I don't remember that. He, he, he There's a montage, in, a fucking endless montage, <laughs> <laughs> which there are a couple of in this movie, mm -hmm. with uh, just, it's hip-hop, and it's MC Hammer. Oh. And uh, how about the closing credits song, Hank? Oh, yeah, well, sure. Oh, my yeah. God, Elton John. The that great was, uh, Elton John. I mean, if you're going to lose me, you're going to definitely lose me uh, at the end when you want to put an Elton John song. In a Rocky in movie. movie. In a Rocky movie. I mean, holy Christ. Yeah. I mean, misery from start to finish. It's insane. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I, what I'm not is a fan this? of Elton John. Uh, but even like Elton John can write. Uh, please ask Elton John to write a song for a movie. Fucking go ahead, <laughs> but you better make sure it's The Lion King. <laughs> yeah, right. Better not be Rocky Five. 
And this is only four years before the fucking Lion King. That's crazy. Well, that's a good point. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord. My God. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just... It's a circle of life. All right. Circle of life. Uh, now, another character that, that I enjoy in this movie is Tommy Gunn, the, the boxing promoter. Yes, the Don King character. Yeah, he, he's Don King, and... Uh, He's so obviously Don King from second one of this movie that, um, but but hey, if you didn't get that that's what they were going for, <laughs> at the very end of the movie, he says, only in America. Oh, man. Yep. <laughs> Don King. Yeah, subtlety, uh, not uh, one of the movie strengths. Remember that movie, Don King, Only in America? I do. That was with uh, Ving Rhames. That's right. The great Ving Rhames as Don right. King. As I recall, that was a pretty good movie. Ah, uh, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, Don King is a fascinating uh, character, though. Sure. He's one of those guys that you still see today sometimes, and you're like, man, he's still around. Is he really? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, I think so. It, it, I mean, it's just sort of like, um, it's like anytime I see Al Sharpton in the news, I'm like, <laughs> Al Sharpton, good for you. Still getting out there. Yeah. <laughs> Al Sharpton. Now, do you know who plays Don King in this movie? What's D his name? Did you recognize him? Franchise crossover? Oh, my God. Not until this second. Uh, was he in uh, uh, one of the Friday the 13th? That is correct. Holy shit. You might recall him as the coroner in Jason Goes uh, to Hell. Jason Goes to that. Hell, the final Friday, in which uh, he's... Um, Taking care of the dead body of Jason. That's and right. And Jason is revealed to be that little wormy guy in this movie. That's right. And he jumps into the coroner's body, and the coroner <laughs> becomes Black Jason. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't believe that didn't occur to me. Yeah. Holy God. There he is. Wow. Yeah. That was uh, after this, right? That was like very very soon after, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think 93 was Jason Goes to Hell. Okay. Yeah, so that happened somewhere in between Rocky Five and Elton John performing The Lion King. <laughs> All right. Oh, man. Um, now, do you got anything to say about this movie? I, feel I really don't. Happy. You know, right, I, right. I feel like I'm tongue-tied, but I really just, I mean, it's just so terrible. I mean, what's there to say? I've got two moments in Rocky Five that made me shiver with um, being disgusted. Okay. We shiver with disgust. Yep. Uh, I'll take them in chronological order. Right. Rocky comes home from Russia, or the Soviet Union, excuse me. Yeah. Because it's still 1985, I think. That's <laughs> true. This movie. That's true. Uh, even though MC Hammer is a thing. Um, <laughs> and. Fucking Rocky runs into Adrian outside their house. Rocky's son, Rocky Jr., comes up to greet him. Paulie's there. And Rocky has a moment with Adrian where uh, he kisses her. And then he says, right in front of his son, mind you. Right in oh, front of yeah. his son. Maybe I'll take you upstairs and violate you like a parking meter. <laughs> All right, oh first of all, God. that's a disgusting thing to say to a woman. Second of all, <laughs> is he implying anal sex? Third of all, is he implying anal sex in front of his 12-year-old son? I, I, so, I have yeah. so many more of alls that I can do. <laughs> that was truly disgusting. Horrifying. Yeah, yeah it really was. Took you took me aback. Yeah. You know, like it, it really took me aback. It really did. But not as much as the next disgusting uh -oh. moment of this movie took me aback. And that is Pauly coming down the stairs dressed as Santa Claus, telling a bunch of kids to sit on his lap. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> that entire sequence is just... It's a question. Now, you know, like, what the fuck? 
Uh, first of all, this Santa suit, yeah. I'm sure, s- just crusty with semen. <laughs> I, I mean, he... <laughs> That that is just Santa jizz right there, and you know he was upstairs fucking that robot in that Santa suit. Yeah, sure. And you might be thinking, listen, they lost everything. There was an estate sale, and they lost everything they own. Right. And what I have to say about that is somehow Paulie found a way to get that robot out of there. And yeah. he's living in sin with this thing up in that bedroom. <laughs> so that's what's going on? That's my theory. Yeah. So the robot, he managed to not sell that in the estate sale. I think he got that robot out of there. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, smuggled it out. Yeah. I've got to assume. I don't know. I think you're right. I think it's a good theory. I think it's a great theory. I don't think Rocky or Adrian knows this, but uh, yeah. he's got that thing upstairs. She's like, you're the yeah. best, Polly," And he's like, quiet. <laughs> he's violating her like a parking meter. I think so. Like, literally, <laughs> they're both machines. His, transgen- yeah. mm-hmm. His transgender robot. Yeah, that's right. Um. Oh, man. All right, and uh, Paulie almost tops this seconds later when um, the boxing promoter, <laughs> <laughs> who is black, shows up at the house, and Paulie says, uh, guess who's coming at dinner? <laughs> Did you catch that? Wow. Yeah. How about that? Is that the most racist thing in any of the movies? No, probably. Doesn't in the first one someone call Apollo like a jigaboo or something? Yes, that's true. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's, not, that's right. The bartender. Yeah, yeah nothing will top that, I suppose. Yeah. Um, no, I, <laughs> I should think not. No, no. I mean, yeah. but it's okay. I mean, it's not as racist as like driving Miss Daisy from around this time. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Yeah, that right. movie's Good worse. Point. All right, so big problem with Rocky. Driving Miss Daisy. Yeah, what about it? I don't know. Nothing. I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh, it's horrible. <coughs> uh, a big problem mm. with uh, with Rocky Five is the main fight at the end of the movie is not a boxing match. It's a street fight. No. Taking it to the streets, as you said, and uh, that's a big problem for me. Yeah. There's got to be a boxing match at the end of your Rocky yeah. movie, and I really think that might have turned people off from this movie. Oh, I think I I agree. I mean, I come right. on, John Avildsen, think... a guy who in his life has only made inspirational sports movies, forgets the main ingredient of the inspirational sports movie: the fucking yeah. fight. You're right. Yeah, it'd be yeah, like if you it, watched The so, Karate Kid it's so, and it ended it's with daniel son just, like, slapping a kid. <laughs> it, it also just, it's so inorganic. Well, part of You that. know, the way it happens. Yeah, I know. Do you know who choreographed the uh, this street fight? Oh, boy. Henry. I'm going to assume. Uh, who are who? you going to assume? Stallone. No. Henry, this is an amazing fact. Uh, The choreographer (laughs) of the street fight is wrestling hardcore legend Terry Funk. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. And Terry Funk's wrestling style, in case you don't know, is to just hit people with steel chairs and throw them against dumpsters. And that's pretty much what this fight is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is. They're just whacking into fences and shit for like twenty minutes. Right. It's pretty in rough. front of a huge crowd. A gigantic crowd, like a crazy, like how many people are watching this? It's like someone <laughs> is like, "Hey, Rocky's fighting," and then, and then there's like the entire <laughs> fucking town came out of their little houses. And at the end of it, uh, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, he he beats up Tommy Gunn, and the Don King fella is like, 
hey, don't don't punch me. I'll sue. I'll sue. And Rocky punches this guy yeah. to holy hell. And his big line is, sue me for what? And uh, <laughs> the answer is assault. Assault. That's the right. answer for right. um, I, I beating that the myself. shit yeah. out of Tommy Gunn and this boxing promoter. <laughs> And uh, you know they took away <laughs> everything. Really like they took life. away everything Rocky Balboa owned at the beginning of this movie. At the, the beginning of Rocky Six, should be them taking his son away. <laughs> CPA, please. Well, we'll see. G C P S. I mean, Child Protective Services. Um, yeah. All right, and that's Rocky Five.